All right, uh, this lecture is lecture 13. We're going to talk about um, momentum. This will be a fairly short lecture uh, that will be, that uh, is necessary material to uh, understand fully lecture 14. Okay, we're going to cover the momentum equations, and uh, essentially we're going to start with Newton's second law, which basically you're used to seeing that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times the acceleration, but the actual way that uh, Newton uh, summed it up was that the sum of the forces is equal to the change in momentum with respect to time, which you can see that here, and that's for a system. And by now you've gotten used to me talking about that most of the things in physics are derived for systems, but in fluid mechanics, we need to talk about them in terms of control volume applications. And so we use the, the Reynolds transport theorem. We can take this system form of the equation uh, for Newton's second law. We apply the Reynolds transport theorem onto it. And we can, uh, by this form here, and we end up uh, getting that the sum of the forces uh, is equal to the change in respect to time of the uh, momentum in the control volume uh, the integral of the, of the momentum in the control volume plus the uh, integral of the, the momentum that is going through each uh, upstream and downstream phase. Uh, what we can say is that uh, if we're looking simply in the x direction, uh, we get this formulation which says that the sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to the change with respect to time of the integral of the momentum flux uh, in the control volume, so that would be what is coming in and what is going out in terms of what's, uh, you know, the change that's occurring inside the control volume, and then the sum of that momentum going across the face. So, as we've kind of said in the past, I, can't, I gave you the, the bathtub type of example where we talk about um, when we're talking about the conservation of what comes in the, the bathtub in terms of flow, in, this, in the case of the example I gave you the other day explaining continuity, uh, we have to understand that uh, this we're talking about the change of the momentum flux in the control volume plus what's coming across the control surfaces. If we look further then and we assume that we have steady flow, uh, we can get rid of uh, the first term there because we have no change with respect to time if it's steady flow. And then if we assume that the momentum uh, flux is only occurring across uh, uh, two faces, so an upstream and a downstream, like you would have in, a, in an open channel flow. Uh, we can write the uh, uh, sum of the forces is equal to this momentum on the upstream face, and it's uh, negative because of the, of the sign convention, the way we show the flux, uh, plus that that's going across the uh, downstream face, too. And, and, and at that point, then, we can take a look at the forces. And, and so if we look at the forces, we, we look at our control volume here. We have the hydrostatic force F1 on the upstream end of the control volume. We have the hydrostatic force F2 on the downstream end. We have the weight force or the body force that's uh, here in the middle that's, that's represented at the centroid. And then we have this frictional resistance, uh, F sub F, along the boundary between the fixed boundary of the channel and the water itself. And so we're talking about over a distance dx, we've got, you can see the sign convention here, the uh, nomenclature that we've got the bed identified as Z1 and Z2. These are typical uh, things that you're used to seeing by now for open channel flows. So we can sum up all the forces in the x direction as F1 minus F2 plus the uh, gravity force or the weight force in the x direction minus the friction force uh, that is uh, retarding the flow. And I note uh, here, I just realized that I've got a um, F, uh, F sub F prime in the equation, and this is the F sub F. Those are one and the same. Uh, I'm just matching it up in the, uh, in the diagram. All right, so if we look further at those forces, we've got the hydrostatic force, which this is from fluid mechanics. You've got the unit weight of the fluid, the area that the force is against times the uh, distance down from the water surface to the centroid of the area. And so this is area one. So this is, th this is area one. This would be the centroid of that uh, distance from the water surface down to the centroid of that area. Uh, F2, again, this should all be reviewed. Uh, if you look at fluid mechanics, looking at the hydrostatic forces. We've got the gravity forces, which is basically the volume of the, of the control volume, which is the uh, uh, <clears throat> value of the A prime 
times dx uh, so that gives you a, a distance of the um, along the uh, um, or basically gives you the volume and then the, the rho g is is basically the weight per unit uh, volume and so that gives you the gravity force in the uh, in the x direction again this this so I think I misspoke a little bit the a bar uh, dx that gives you the volume the uh, unit weight is is uh, the rho g so that gives you a total weight of that control volume and then we multiply by s sub o that gives us the component in the x direction and then the uh, external force due to friction we have a familiar term of the the bed shear stress the tau zero times uh, dx uh, p which is the wetted perimeter and that p wetted perimeter times dx that's the area of the control volume surface between the fixed surface and the uh, fluid. So you can think of that as what's in contact, the water that's in contact with the bed and, and banks of, of the river. So that, that uh, uh, can be expanded to the rho g uh, a dx sf. Uh, if we think of that in terms of an earlier derivation that we've done a couple lectures ago uh, where we, we showed this actual derivation against the S sub F, uh, you know, basically here uh, tau is equal to gamma R S sub F. That was a, a derivation that done a couple lectures ago when we uh, derived the equations for the uh, Manning uh, equation and the uh, Chazy's equation. All right, so if I replace those forces that I just uh, are the, uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, Uh, if we replace those forces with uh, uh, that were in the original equation back here, if we replace those forces right here with what we actually derived just now, we show this up on the left side, and then this is basically the momentum fluxes across those um, boundaries. Um, again, the uh, F sub prime F is the friction force due to the external forces exerted on the water. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and so, uh, for I make a point here that um, that the uh, friction force is an external force. Uh, H sub L, which is a you know where we got the friction surface, uh, the the uh, energy grade, the S sub F, which is the friction grade line. Those should not be confused with each other. One is a friction force, the other is due to energy loss um, in the entirety of the fluid. Okay, not just the interaction with the boundary, but all the entire fluid. So it's just a, a fine point, but we want to make that. Now for uniform flow, uh, we're going to have that um, uh, the, the pressure forces are going to balance each other, and we're going to end up having the same velocity upstream as we have downstream. And you can see that this gravity force is equal to the friction force, which is what we see here in the second bullet. Okay, So again, for uniform flow, YC1 is equal to YC2, A1 is equal to A2, so these cancel out. And then these cancel out over here because V1 is equal to V2. Doggone it. Um, all right, so uh, we use the energy and momentum principles to derive various equations and concepts. Um, you know, that we have energy equations that, are, that, are, that work well for a lot of our problems, but when we get into situations like the hydraulic jump and some rapidly varied flow, we don't we're not able to characterize the energy loss as easily. So we end up using the momentum equation and the momentum principles to, uh, to decide what, or to, to work, to be our tool that we use to solve uh, the particular problem. And um, when we look at um, uh, some of these equations, like the energy equation, you can see that they, they yield n uh, nearly the same equation, but they are fundamentally different principles. Uh, momentum is a vector quantity. Energy is a scalar. Uh, momentum considers external resistance. Energy considers internal resistance. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to go in and out now. That's lecture 13. As I said, it would be it's it's nice and short. Uh, think about what's been said. Maybe review this. Make sure you understand the the momentum concept. Remember, I, I talked to you the other day about the force on a a car. Uh, as we, we try to compute what force would it take uh, for a car uh, crossing a low water crossing in a flash flood 
Well, you know, we, we would use the momentum equation to, to compute uh, the forces on the automobile. And so that would be one of the ways that, you know, you could theoretically determine uh, what kind of force and then you'd look at, well, you know, the frictional resistance of the tires on the pavement and could they withstand that force. And, and so those are the kind of things that we look at when somebody says that the force uh, per unit area is such and such uh, on an automobile for a flow moving at, you know, three miles an hour, four miles an hour. They use the momentum equation to de determine that.